Hi guys, it's Graham again and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with part one of my May reading wrap up. I read 10 books in May. Um, it was an okay reading month. I read some absolutely fantastic books and I read some not quite so fantastic books. Um, and it's unlike me to continue to read a book if I'm not enjoying it, but I felt for once that I needed to push through and just get them read. Uh, so the first book I read in May was Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. Now I absolutely adored this book. This book destroyed me. Um, this tells the story of William Shakespeare's son Hamnet who dies of the pestilence. Um, he is a twin and his twin sister is Judith. She comes down with, with the, the, the plague, the pestilence, and he vows to take her place and and he does so and he ends up dying. Judith is the weaker of the two twins uh, but she survives um, and it's it's about how we as human beings deal with grief and how grief affects us um, years down the line um, and then four years after Hamlet's death uh, Hamlet is written by William Shakespeare and it's just absolutely glorious. The writing in this is just spectacular. It, I, I haven't read a book like this in many years. Um, this is a serious contender for my favourite book of 2020 uh, and I loved it. And if you haven't read it yet, why not read it? It's so, so good. You won't regret it. Beautiful. And this was my first Maggie O'Farrell and it will not be my last. The next book I read was The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. Um, I read this as part of Simon Savage and uh, Melanie Sykes' book club and I, I really, really enjoyed this. This was so clever. Um, a few spoilers here. You don't find out who um, is who has been killed until like the last couple of chapters. Um, it's told from the perspective of... Uh, several different people in a group of like I think it's about nine or ten people they're friends they've met up in a, a hunting lodge in the highlands of Scotland um, it's uh, it's Hogmanay or New Year's Eve they're celebrating they do it every year they go to a different place and this year they've come to Scotland and uh, yeah stuff goes down and it's full of of so many little clues that are so beautifully tied up towards the end and and little details that you think, wow, that that's I love how that's been tied up. And I've heard this likened to a sort of modern day Agatha Christie. And I think Agatha if I <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> if Agatha Christie were alive today, I think that she would probably really enjoy this book. Um and and, and I think she'd she'd be quite proud of it being likened to her books, because let's face it, Agatha Christie and Mysteries that's just, yeah, that, that's that, that's the high water mark of mystery writing for me. That and uh, Arthur Conan Doyle. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. But this was really good. Um, like I say, you don't find out who the, the person that's been murdered is right until the, the very end. And uh, when you find out, and when you find out who's killed them, you're just like, wow. My mind was blown. Um, I will link uh, Simon Savage and Melanie Sykes's video down below so you can go have a look. Um, and then see if you want to join in um, with, with their next book, which is uh, Graceland by Bethan Roberts. I'm currently reading that and absolutely loving it. And uh, Simon Savage and Melanie Sykes' book club is da bomb, if anyone actually says that anymore. So that was my second book, The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. My third book, um, after two amazing books, I just I just wanted something to just chill, to just chill out with. And this took me not even half an hour to read. And I absolutely love this um, because the person that wrote this book is just, in my view, an absolute genius. Um, it's Coat of Many Colours by Dolly Parton and the illustrations are by Judith Sutton. Now this book is, it's a children's book. It's a, it's a picture book and it has the lyrics to Coat of Many Colours as the story. And it's just absolutely glorious. Let me get a really good photo, well, illustration rather. 
I mean, look at that. It's just beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Um, and I'm happy to A, have read this, and to B, have it in my collection because it's great. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, Coat Many Colours by Dolly Parton. Uh, the next one that I read, I didn't enjoy as much as I thought I was going to. And it kind of upsets me a little because there's a book that I read that was kind of based upon this or the idea of this. And that was Grief is a Thing with Feathers by Max Porter. And I loved that book. That book was incredible. Such a well-written book and loved it. Uh, but this book was, was the sort of source material for that one. And I wish, for me, I wish this was better. I mean, I can appreciate the words and the writing. It, it, the writing was beautiful. But for me, I just, I don't know. Um, it was The Crow by Ted Hughes. I felt that this was obnoxious. I felt that this was aggressive. Um, it was snarky and uh, petulant. Um, I know that it was written at a time in Ted Hughes's life when he had just lost his wife. Um, Sylvia Plath but it just comes across as not very nice um, there were some really lovely poems in here but for the most part they're violent, they're dark, they're bloodthirsty and yeah I, I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would I'm not um, saying that I won't give this another try in the future um, because obviously when you read something at a time when it's not right for you it, you might not appreciate it as much as you could. And I think that during the coronavirus lockdown is possibly not the time to read something like this, um, just just because of the situation and the dark days, really. Um, and by dark days, I don't mean weather-wise, because we've been having lovely weather. I mean, just the coronavirus is like a cloud hanging over our heads. And yeah, I don't think this was the, the right book for that time. Um, but I can appreciate the absolutely amazing writing, um, which kind of is a bit like a, a backhanded compliment, I suppose. Anyway, yeah, so that was The Crow by Ted Hughes. Um, the fifth book and the last book in this part, um, I absolutely loved. This was beautiful. Um, apparently this was a labour of love for about 13 or 14 years for the author. Um, it is my third book by this author that I've read and I absolutely loved this. It was The Three Incestuous Sisters by Audrey Niffenegger. Um, this is a, it's a picture book um, and there are some there are some parts of, of a story. It tells the story of three sisters who, I'll not show you that picture because that's a bit risky, <laughs> who live alone. Um, they one of them meets a boy and falls in love and one of the other sisters falls in love with him as well. It's about, it's about jealousy. It's about unrequited love. It's about loss. Um, yeah. So, I mean, with, oh goodness me, knocking things over. With artwork like that, it's just glorious. It's so, it's kind of, it's kind of dark. It's gothic. It's, it feeds into the whole idea of hopelessness and grief and sadness and unrequited love and lost love. And it was just incredible. I absolutely loved this. Um, I keep trying to get my husband to read this. Um, my husband, Duncan, uh, he is registered as partially sighted. I've probably mentioned this before in previous videos, um, but he doesn't read um, actual physical books anymore because he can't physically see the words written. There are so few words on each page and the print is really large so I think that this would be a really amazing book for him to read and I keep trying to get him to and he keeps saying yes I'll read it, I'll read it and he hasn't yet and you know he has to read it because it's it's an incredible book. He will love it and I'm sure he will and I'm sure you will too. Um, so yeah that was the, the fifth book uh, that I read in May, uh, the incestuous, the three incestuous sisters by Audrey Niffenegger. Um, that's the end of this part. Uh, join me again soon for part two. Uh, what are you doing? What are you reading? 
how's how's life going for you? Um, how are you coping with lockdown um, and the current situation of the world? Um, the world, <laughs> the world is broken, but it will mend. Hopefully, hopefully soon. I'm going on a tangent again. Um, anyway, <laughs> whatever you're doing, I hope you have so much fun doing it. Whatever you're reading, I hope you love it. Stay fabulous, be amazing, be yourself, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon for another video. Bye-bye.